Let's take a look at a coded example for this one. Develop an application that accepts the user's name as input. The application should identify and output the length of the person's name, the first letter of the name, and the last letter of the name. Now this is all the stuff we've just done, so it should be straightforward enough to do. The application should make use of instantiable classes, so in this example we'll do an instantiable class called name.java, and then we'll do an app class called nameapp.java. Okay, so let's switch over to TextPad and take a look at that now. Okay, so here you'll see I have TextPad open and I've already saved my class as name.java. This is going to be my instantiable class. And I have a second class here called nameapp.java. I've already put my comments in at the top, so we're ready to go. So my instantiable class needs to accept the name from the user, it needs to calculate the length, and it needs to get the first and last letters of the name. So my input to this program is going to be the name, which will be a string. My output from the program is going to be the length, the first character, and the last character. So they're going to be two character variables and one integer variable. We'll start by giving our class header public class name. Then we declare our variables, or our data members. All of these need to be private. So we have private string name, that's our input. We have private int len, which is our length. Again, len is just something I tend to use to denote the length of something, okay? It's short for length. If you think, and length is one of those words people tend to spell wrong when they're typing. Rather than coming out L-E-N-G-T-H, it'll come out L-E-N-T-G-H or T-H-G. It never tends to come out right. If you're gonna spell it wrong, don't use it. Save yourself problems later on. So private string name, private int len, private char first letter and private char last letter. Public class is the name of my constructor. Sorry, not public class, public name is the header for my constructor. And I'll just pop a comment in here, constructor. Okay. Now, in here, we're going to take each of our data members and we're going to give them default values. So name equals empty quotes because it's a string, double quotes there. Len equals zero because it's an integer. And then first letter equals empty single quotes because it's a character. And last letter equals empty single quotes because it's a character. Okay, so that's straightforward enough. Then we have any set methods that we might need. One for every input, don't forget. And our input to this program is simply the name. So public void set name, string name, this dot name equals name. Okay, then we're going to do our, then we're going to do our compute method. And I'll just scroll down here. That's going to be public void compute. In here, we need to work out what's the length of the name, what's the first letter of the name, and what's the last letter of the name. So len equals, can we remember the code from before? Name.length is the method, okay? Length is a method as well, so don't forget your round brackets here. So that calculates the length of name and stores it in len. Then we want to work out the first letter. So first letter equals name dot, and the method we use here is char at. Watch out for the uppercase A here. When we squash two words together, every new word gets a capital letter. That's your camel case. Name dot char at, and the index we're looking for, because we're looking for the first letter, it's going to be at index zero. And then we have last letter equals name dot char at, and this time we're looking for the length of the name minus one. So we want to take one from the length. If I enter Francis, for example, F-R-A-N-C-E-S, that's seven letters, the length of my name is going to be seven, but my last index is going to be six. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, okay? That's the end of our compute method, so we close that. And now we have to do our get methods. And that's 
one for every oh one for every output okay so the first thing we want to print out is the length of the name so public int get len return len then we want to do the first letter so public char first letter return first letter and then finally public char last letter return last letter we close that method and we close our class control and one to compile excellent and now we're on to our app class so into our app class, again, I've already got this saved. I've got my comment in here. My class net header is public class name app. I need my main method header, public static void main string args. Close my curly brackets so that I don't forget later. And in here now, I want to declare my variables. My variables are going to be much the same as before. String name. Again, watch out uppercase S for string all of the time. Int len. Char. First letter. Last letter. Then I need to declare and create my objects. Okay, the object I want to use in this instance is the name. Okay, I want to use the name class and I'm going to call it my name. Now, previously I would have done these two steps on separate lines, but I just want to demonstrate that they can in fact happen all on one line. So, name, my name would have been the first line, and then the next line would have been my name equals new name. Okay, now we can just shorten these and put the two on the one line. And what it becomes then is name my name equals new name so class object equals new class okay same thing it's much of a muchness whether you do it one one line or two but sometimes it's quicker just to do the two on the one line so that's our object so we've all our ingredients ready everything's ready to go now to do our input and then we'll do our process and then we'll do our output okay so my input and my output I'm going to need to use J option pane so I go back up the top and I import Java X dot swing dot J option pane and now for my input I want to ask the user to enter their name so name equals J option pane dot show input dialog null please enter your name we don't need to parse it because J option pane accepts a string expects a string and we want a string so that's fine if we were dealing with integers then we would look at parsing so we read in the name and store it in the name variable and now we need to send that name into the instantiable class so my name dot set name name the next thing we want to do then is our process. So we want to tell the instantiable class to calculate or to do the calculations that we have in our compute method. So my name dot compute. And then finally we need to get back all of those values that we had created get methods for in the instantiable class. So if we look at the instantiable class, we have get len, get this should be get first letter, apologies, get first letter and get last letter now in fact these would work if they were just called first letter and last letter okay but to stick with good programming practice we'll call them get first letter and get last letter apologies for that back into the app class so len equals my name dot get len first 
letter equals my name dot get first letter and last letter equals my name dot get last letter so that's all of our values gotten back from the insantable class and now we just need to print them so j option pane dot show message dialog null your name has plus len letters okay the first letter is plus first letter and the last letter is plus last letter okay and now I'll compile this control and one to compile control and two to run please enter your name Francis so it should tell me my name has seven letters the first letter is F and the last letter is S your name has seven letters the first letter is F and the last letter is S and that is that in a nutshell so just using the length method and the char app method to look at the first letter the last letter and the length of a string next we're going to take a look at how we can use some of these methods along with loops to do even more with a string so let's take a look 